ain't nothing smoother than Quasar's Q slider component. Let's jump in here and have a play with it. Q dash slider. And we need to model something here. So we can come in and say V dash model is equal to selection. And then we need a selection as well. So we'll say const selection is equal to a ref. And we'll import that. And then let's set it equal to five by default. By the way, if you haven't done this already, make sure you take the time to set up your linter. Check out that part of the Quasar docs in setting up your, uh, basically setting up VS Code so that it plays nice with Quasar. Because then when you do stuff like this, where you've got basically cruft that you don't need, and this equal sign isn't lining up perfectly with the ref there, I just save the file and then everything works out. So it's really nice to have everything save and then format for you. But anyway, let's dive into the video. So now we're modeling something, we can move this left and right and to actually see what we're modeling there, let's throw in a pre tag and we can just spit out selection. All right, there we go. Now I might wrap this in a card, Control Shift P, wrap, and then a Q dash card. And then I'll do arrow right, Q dash card dash section to add a bit of padding. Yeah, I think this makes it a little bit easier to view, but we also want to say class is equal to full width on that, on that card. There we go. This looks a lot nicer and it's easier to play with. Okay, the next thing I want to do is set a min and max. So at the moment, the maximum is 100. I can come into the slider and say min is equal to 5, for example, and then max is equal to 100. And there we go, five is at the bottom because that's the minimum and then all the way back up to 100. Or you could set this to something like 50. Yeah, nice. And it easily kind of figures out how far the track should be and does all of the calculations behind you. So you can just focus on getting the data from the user. All right, let's set this to zero. And then we'll come down here and see what else we can do. We can say inner dash min and set that equal to something like 10. And I'll show you what this does in a second. And let's do the same with inner max. Now you wanna make sure the inner minimum is higher than the minimum. And then the inner max is lower than the max. So we'll set this equal to 40. And now notice we get like this second gray trackpad here. See that? This second gray trackpad is telling us what the inner minimum is. So it just adds a little bit more context, which is really nice. But we'll cross that out for now and move on to the next thing. How about we set the color equal to red? So we can change the color. Another thing we can do is say thumb dash color. And let's set that equal to something crazy like purple. So there we go. So we have a different thumb color. And I want something that looks a little bit nicer. So I might say red nine to get a darker red. Yeah, I think that works really well. Now we can say track dash size to change the track size. Let's set that equal to 10 pixels. And there we go. We can also say thumb dash size to change the size of this little thumb thing that we can click on. And how about we set that to something bigger like 35 pixels. Cool. We'll play around with the colors a little bit more. We can say label dash color. And before I show you the label color, I should show you that we can actually say label here. And by saying label, it means as we drag this, we get that label at the top, which is really nice. And now I can say label dash color and set that equal to anything like green. So let's save that. Oh, and I need to bring label back in. Label. And there we go. Now we get a label with a green color. But that looks a bit ridiculous, so I'm going to remove it. But I'll keep label so we can still see that. Another thing we can do is say label text color. So you might set it to something like red dash two. So it's still got a little bit of red in it. Yeah, blends a little bit more into the background, which might be the effect that you want. And another thing we can do is change the track color, of course. So let's set that equal to red dash two. So it fits the theme a little bit more, maybe red one. Yep, I like that. And another thing you can do is the inner track color. So let's set this equal to just plain red. And in order to show this, I'm going to have to bring back inner track. So let's come in and say inner min and then inner max, and we'll set the inner min to 10 and the inner max to 40. And there we go. Now we can see we've got an inner track color as well. So rather than red, actually, let's change it to something like maybe red dash three. Yeah, there we go. So the styling control we have over this is pretty awesome, which is what you'd expect from Quasar. 
So let's come down and see what else we can do by removing some of this to bring us back to a simpler example. I might bring label back in though, because I really like label. And there we go. And another thing we can do is say disable. We get this with most Quasar components that relate to importing data, which means we can't change that value. And we can also set it to read only, which means we can't change the value, but it's mostly just for displaying purposes. So for giving users feedback, letting them know the progress of something that they wouldn't be able to change. So it might be like something related to the weather that users don't have control over. I wish I had control over that, but I don't. Another thing we can do is say vertical, which is going to make a vertical version of the track. Pretty cool. And we can also reverse it. So if we say reverse here, then it flips to the other side. So now the bottom is the smallest number, and then the top is the largest, which makes more sense with vertical. So when you're using vertical, you might definitely want to reverse it. But reverse also works on horizontal, which means now the top is on the left. So that might make sense depending on your application. All right, bringing this back to a simpler example, we can also say label dash always. Now I like this because I think it's just a better experience for the user being able to always see that label. So if you don't have label always, you have to be dragging it to see the label, but then label always means that you're always going to see what the resulting value is. So I really like that. Let's keep it on there for now. Another thing we can do is say step. So let's change our steps to five, meaning we're always going to snap to a step in increments of five. So notice we have 20 here. As I drag across, it waits until I hit the increment of five. So we can change that to something like 10, and then it's going to do steps of 10. There we go. So let's bring this down to two because there's something else cool I want to show you related to this, and that is snap. So I can say snap here, and that means as I drag across, it's going to snap by twos. And I think that's actually a nicer experience for the user rather than something smooth because it makes it a little bit more obvious that they've changed the value. So I almost always have snap inside of my slider components. Another thing we can do is change the step to a decimal value. So 0 0.1, for example, and now we can do much smaller steps. And if you want infinite precision here, you can actually set that to a zero. And now you've got infinite precision on that step. Okay, but we don't really need that. Let's change it back to a two and see what else we can do. We can also overwrite what the label value is going to be. So if we say label dash value, we can do something like this. Give me the value and then return val plus px for pixels, for example. Save it. Oh, and this isn't a function, so I'll have to get rid of that part there. And it's saying undefined because instead of value, that should be selection now. There we go. So we can directly pass that in just to give a little bit more context to the user. And by the way, check this out. If I say px, I'll just add a few more x's there so that our label's longer. Notice that the label is pointing on the left side. So see this little arrow here? See how it's on the left side? But as we make our way across to the right, the arrow is now on the right side. So it gradually makes its way to the right side. So the label changes to make sure it's always visible. Okay, so it's visible at the moment because the label is basically pointing on the left side. And then when we drag it across, it's still visible because it's pointing on the right side. Whereas if it didn't do that, the label would be spilling over the edge here. So that's a really cool feature that Quasar just gives us by default. Really, really cool stuff. I'll bring that back. And what else can we do? Another thing we can do is have markers. Now this is really cool. So now if we add markers, we can see where we're snapping to. So markers basically works with the step property here and allows us to see where those steps lie. We can also add labels to those markers by saying marker.labels. And there we go, we get numbers underneath for all of them. I might make the steps a bit higher so that they're easier to see. Yeah, there we go. Let's create some more space here. There we go. And what else can we do? We can even switch the side of these marker labels. So we can say switch marker labels side and now they're going to switch to the top. And on that topic, we can also change the label side. So we can say switch dash label dash side. And so now the label's on the bottom and it doesn't clash with the markers. So that's good to know. All right, we'll go back to our other example and press on.
we also have a slot for all of our markers. Now this is really, really cool. Check this out. We can basically tap in here. So we'll use the slot template. And this one is called marker label group. And we'll set that equal to scope so we can pull the scope out there. And I might just quickly show you what we get available to us. Scope. And let's wrap this in a pre-tag. Control Shift P, wrap, pre, save it. Oh, that should be marker label group. There we go. So notice that we've got the marker list, the list of all the markers that we can show, and then the classes that we can basically proxy those classes directly through. And if we come down here, we've also got a map of the markers. So we've got the indexes here that we can work with. Really, really cool. All right, let's play around with this and actually use that data to display something. Because this can be a little bit confusing at first. So we'll add a div in there. And then we'll say v-4 is equal to marker in scope dot marker list. Now we're going to need a key as well. And we can set that key equal to marker dot index because our markers have an index so we can uniquely identify them. All right, let's see what we get by default. Nothing. And part of that is because I haven't actually put anything inside of this div. So let's come in here and put the marker inside there by saying marker.value. And there we go. However, obviously this isn't the display we want. So we want to get that original display that Quasar gives us. Luckily, that's easy to do. We can say class is equal to marker.classes. And that's going to proxy the classes that Quasar gives us into the classes in this div. And now we can say style and basically the same thing with style because Quasar's markers have a few styles as well. And there we go. Basically, we've proxied the marker functionality, which means we can now tap in here and do whatever we want, which is awesome. So check this out. I can say Control Shift P, wrap, and then we can make this a Q dash chip, save it, and now they're all Q chips. And we can do whatever we want here. We could change the color. So maybe I could say like color is equal to blue. And now we're going to have blue chips. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have the colon, blue. And the last thing I'll show you in this video is something really cool that Quasar does in the docs. So I'll get rid of this chip component here. And what they do is they make it so that we have a color for this bottom number and then it gradually gets darker as we get to the top number. And it does that using math. So check this out. We can put this inside of an array. Here we go. And then we can add some of our own classes on top of the marker classes. So let's say template string then we'll say text dash deep dash orange. So we're going to make this an orange color. So that worked, they're now all orange. But then we can say dash dollar sign and then the curly braces to basically put in any value we want here. So we'll say two plus, And the reason I say two is because I want the value to be at least two. Otherwise this zero is going to be way too light. Math dot seal. And the reason we want to say seal is because that's going to sealing this number so that it doesn't end up being a decimal. And then we can say here, marker.value divided by two. And I think I'm actually going to have to make that number a little bit bigger in this example, since 50 divided by two is going to give us 25. And that would mean we'd get text deep orange 20, 27, which would be way too large a number and that's not going to work. So check this out. Notice we only actually get to 15, so I need to make this a higher number, maybe 12. There we go, we can see that it's a lighter color and it gradually gets darker. How cool is that? We get some pretty amazing flexibility here using the marker label group slot. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Now you know everything you need to know for using the Q slider component. See you in the next video.